everyone, uh, welcome to another video. And uh, today's topic about hand and revisited exercises. And for those who never heard about it, I just want to say a couple of uh, words about this exercise. It's a contemporary exercise it's based on Hammond exercises, where while one hand is playing an original exercise, another hand is playing a counterpoint. Um, it also includes a few versions of rhythmic exercises, which we're going to talk about um, in this video a little bit later. The book was first published in 1968 by Arthur Gold and Robert Fisdale, and I've never heard about these exercises till a couple of days ago when one of my viewers emailed me with a request. Thank you. And if you want to take a look at the score, there is an ebook with selected exercises in the description below. And since I'm not going to use um, the score on the screen because I couldn't find any download links on the internet, you simply can use that book to follow this video. And in this video, I'll share with you some new ideas that you can use to practice these exercises. And keep in mind that the main rules of analyzing and practicing these exercises with imagination, dynamics, intonation, weight, articulation, and phrasing remain the same as in the original Hannon exercises. And you can click up here, over there, to watch my previous video about it. Right there. <laughs> um, as you can already see from the title of this video, um, in these exercises we're going to focus mainly on training polyphonic ear and muscle breathing. And why do we need it? Um, the answer is simple. <laughs> we need polyphonic ear to better control our fingers, not to end up playing a mess, something like this. Okay, that sounds pretty nice. Right? head and your left hand really tend to play um, the original pattern it's gonna be so confusing so you have to control it with your mind first first mind then fingers and we need hands muscles breathing to play without stiffness so we could easily speed up and play effortlessly So before starting imagining anything, make sure you are clear about wrist and elbow movements, just like I showed in the previous Canon video. And always write down elbow movements in this chord, um, uh, just like I did in the book. Um, because, you know, if you're trying to keep in mind the notes, when you, you know, to move your elbow on, it's going to be very confusing as soon as you start adding more layers and more tasks to think about. So if you have a chance, just, you know, take a pencil, write down on every single bar where you need to move your elbow. Now, if you play slowly and feel there is no much difference in playing with or without elbow, you will appreciate it later when playing, uh, while playing fast, uh, because it will help releasing tension in the wrists uh, a lot. So this is how movements would look like in the very first exercise. So the wrist will go um, uh, to the direction of, of the nodes and the elbow will go right to left depending on uh, where you're shifting uh, high or low. absolutely relaxed hands and make all the movements as big as possible. So after that you can move on to imagination and the goal here is to imagine basically every pair of notes, every single interval. This, this has to be imagined very clear where both notes would sound equally loud in your mind. Not just, let's say, the right hand more prominent and left hand somewhere in the fog, <laughs> very vague. Uh, otherwise, that's what you're gonna get <laughs> when you play. So, uh, I would suggest to start working with one interval at a time. Imagining notes sequentially, starting from the note with the descending direction. So if you have this pair of notes, 
and this is to the left and this is to the right. Start imagining from the C. This way. Again, for your imagination, you can use any timbres you want. You can just simply use a pitch or timbre of strings or voices or a sound texture timbre. But I would suggest you not to touch piano sound because somehow it's harder to stretch and kind of glide the sound in your imagination with a static piano sound. So that's just my suggestion. So after you've done it with one interval, start speeding up till both notes are imagined at once. showing you this uh, to demonstrate what would happen in your imagination. You're not allowed to touch the nose, okay? So you just imagine this way in your mind. Okay, not allowed, it's kind of harsh, you know, sorry. Um, yeah, I suggest you not to, to play this way. Just do it in your mind. So as soon as you get it, simply play with correct wrist movement, um, just like this. Basically, you express um, what you have imagined. Now, next, try to connect pairs practicing one bar at a time. So let's say you're done working with every single interval in a bar this way. And then now you need to imagine this in your mind. Basically, every single pair of notes you have to connect with the next pair with kind of, you know, right-left uh, movement in your mind with the glissando. And it's kind of very fun and satisfying to do. I would just suggest you to do this even if you, you know, um, okay, let me just say that this hand exercise is quite challenging for developing polyphonic ear, but let's say you don't have any deadlines and you simply want to improve something in your skills, that's what you gotta do. You just take one bar for a day or one bar for a week, depends on your um, level, and you just work this way and after a week or more you will uh, definitely feel uh, so much improvement. So after you've done this, in your mind, first of all you need to congratulate yourself, good job. <laughs> And then you simply play what you have imagined. You imagine you play, you imagine next nose, you play, you imagine next nose, you play. So the goal here is simply to connect all the sound movements in your mind with the hand movements. Uh, again, don't play too much without intonation and weight as it can cause some unpleasant sensation in your wrist area. So if you just play this way, after some time you will feel stiffness. So, uh, start internal singing. And FYI, guys, you can internally sing both lines. So, you get a weight and basically... As soon as you reach it with your vocal cords, reach the next note with your vocal cords, you touch the key. So, if I will try to, again, how to say... Um, if I try to make... Uh, if I try to illustrate what I'm what I'm doing internally to sound this way. And that will work. So it looks like this. loud yet. Uh, so after you're done with the first layer of imagination, you can always advance it by adding dynamics and voicing, um, especially voicing it. You know, it makes everything sound more, um, I would say, classy and beautiful. Again, how to do it, I explained in my previous Hannah uh, video. So not playing just this way.
uh, let my fingers lift up naturally. Now, these simple exercises, um, this one. Some exercises you can do without much thinking and automatically improve speed in your playing. If you're not doing it correctly, you will only end up wasting your time. Maybe you will feel some effect, but it will not last and the next day you will be back to nothing. So these rhythmic exercises are for training your hand muscles to breathe. Um, to inhale and exhale when you play fast passages with phrasing. And if you're not using phrasing while practicing rhythmically, there is no use of these exercises. Uh, because hand muscles can breathe while playing only if you have an even structure, you know, the length and shape of blocks. Uh, let's say I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna show you playing very fast so you can feel the difference. This is, for example, without any phrasing, any intonation. Okay, I kind of still feel my hands breathing, but it, <laughs> I'm sure if you try, you will see difference. Um, and, for example, with the phrasing, if I play. and release the, um, the tension in my hand. So coming back to these exercises, um, there are four types of uh, rhythm, of the rhythm for every exercise. And what you would want to do with each of them is to group short notes uh, into a motif or, or <laughs> two groups of short notes uh, into a phrase where second group is more prominent. So let me just explain what I mean. In the A exercise, uh, you can group every two notes into a motif. So this one, wait. one motif, then. Um, of course, as you know about phrasing, we can only feel it through intonation, uh, singing with movement, glissando, resistance. And basically, have an intention to bring more energy to the second interval. Um, so it sounds this way. If I would sing, for example. interval and inhale with a new motif again and I explained in my previous videos about phrasing that I'm not um, talking about literal inhale or exhale it's more like a sensation that you can um, basically feel while doing while internally singing with phrasing and you can watch the video about phrasing again if you click up there and when you start playing with the same internal singing, you will notice how um, your hand muscles will start breathing and kind of breathe out, releasing the uh, tension together with your singing. And this is how you train your muscles breathe while playing. So if you sing and play, the exact rhythm. You know, it's written just to show the pattern. Uh, take enough time in between notes um, so you, you would um, feel everything you need to feel, basically. And then later, when you're ready, then you can speed up. So you can start like this, you know. Just faster. You can also try.
train different nuances of breathing. Uh, if you unite two motifs into, uh, if you unite two motifs into one phrase, and let's say you would emphasize the second motif, you will notice that after the first motif, you will exhale, um, and then inhale with a different depth, a different nuance. And uh, it's very important to have the skill, um, the skill of different gradations of basically muscle breathing. So it's not only full exhale and full inhale, but it's also uh, some little levels of this, you know, more or less. <laughs> um, it does sound this way. Uh, if I sing. and hand exercises might put you on afterpilot where you start playing without much thinking. The B exercise I found unnecessarily confusing, so I simply skipped it. In the C exercise, uh, you would apply the same principle of uh, motifs and phrases. So, if you think first, make energetically uh, some kind of crescendo towards the last interval. So if you have rhythm, and then play. rhythm while playing, uh, you need it again more like to know the pattern. So just take time uh, between every note so you would feel all your intentions, all the energy, all the uh, breath while playing. And again later when you're already more secure with this sensation then you can speed up. into one phrase with a second more permanent motif and it would sound this way. And again while playing this exercise keep focus. Um, don't play without thinking. And uh, in the D exercise, uh, group all the short notes into one motif again with the last more prominent interval. So if I sing. into one phrase, second, fr uh, second motif, more important. Uh, actually, if you follow the phrasing that is in my first original Helen exercise book, 
you might find it very, very helpful because you will know how many motifs would be in one phrase because sometimes there will be three motifs. Okay, just saying. Um, again, keep focus while playing these exercises. Don't go into afterpilot. And that's about it. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.